all these years, we've ogled and been awestruck by this foldable. The Samsung really has enjoyed the first mover advantage here in India and in most parts of the world, more importantly, a monopoly with the Samsung Flip 4 and of course, the Samsung Fold as well. Now this one seemed almost flawless or perfect and we always thought about how you can take things to the next level, make it better. The most satisfying thing though was wrapping up a phone call, maybe when your boss calls you the next time and slamming this clamshell shut. Then comes a new contender, someone who wants to take on Samsung, especially here in India, the Oppo Find N2 Flip. So in this battle of foldables, or shall I say flippables, which is the real practical bet for you? More importantly, which one comes out on top? Well, that's what we're going to find out on Tech Today. After Galaxy Unpack, we spent a few months with this device and we had exclusive access to this Oppo Find N2 Flip even before its global launch event in London where we did all sorts of cool things with this device, took photos to really put it through its paces and honestly, everything that could have been a complaint with the Flip 4 and you thought to yourself, hey, Samsung's gonna fix it maybe with the Flip 5, the next one. It looks like Oppo has come in, swooped in and made all those changes. And honestly, this one does pack a punch. The first thing was, the first gripe, when you open this up, the aspect ratio is a little weird. It doesn't seem like a smartphone. More importantly, the crease is clearly visible. If you're not nitpicking, then that's a great viewing experience because Samsung is absolutely flawless with their usual bar phone displays. But when it comes to this particular foldable, well, that was something that annoyed a lot of people. Q, the Oppo Find N2 Flip, and it's almost like magic. A lot like their other foldable device, which never got here to Indian shores, but the crease isn't visible at all. And I think that's something they take a lot of pride in. And then when you slam this shut, firstly, let me tell you something. It feels a lot more like a device in your hand. When you hold the Oppo Find N2 Flip, it opens up the dimensions, the aspect ratio, is a lot more like an ordinary phone. So it feels like you've got an iPhone or even a Samsung S23 in your hand once you open it up. Crease aside, another thing was this horizontal notification screen, which reminded you of the early 2000s. Very limited functionality. Even the cover screen when you're using it for a camera doesn't give you a proper perspective or a good understanding of how to use this device. But then when you have almost a secondary display, truly a secondary display, a vertical one too, with all sorts of fun functionality here. And more importantly, six, seven widgets, which can open up the camera app in a jiffy. If you're done with that, even here, the photo that you take on the camera is a lot more accurate, a good representation of what it would actually be like. On that note, fairly decent. And if you actually even open up something like the weather app, this seems like a very utilitarian and still a very good looking screen. Is it intrusive? Some people would argue that, hey, this is something we prefer in terms of design. But honestly, I think this is the amount of data I would want if I'm spending nearly 80,000 rupees on a foldable device. In a nutshell, or shall I say in a clamshell, this 1.9 inch horizontal display on the cover screen doesn't make the cut especially once you've been exposed to this particular 3.26 inch AMOLED panel with all sorts of animations and really interesting functionalities. That's where the Find N2 Flip beats the original flippable or foldable in the foldable race. In terms of really using these phones and flipping and turning them around, this one, the Samsung, is a little stiff even after many weeks of usage, but that's just how their hinge mechanism is. Now, this is one of the few devices, Samsung's line of foldable devices do come with dust and water resistance. And that's something that the company seems to have invested in, which I find fascinating because they have a proprietary mechanism by which their devices can withstand water and dust. But when you shut it, you can still see maybe through the device maybe slip a couple of things in as well. 
and maybe that could attract a little bit of dust and other particles. When you're talking about the flexion hinge on the Oppo, that's what they're calling it, it shuts completely, leaving no space for any sort of particles to enter. That said, it doesn't come officially with IP resistance. Now, are you going to be worried about that? Because it's also a very expensive premium device. Well, we spoke to the team at Oppo in London at the global launch event, and their team that actually designed this phone told us that largely when you talk about IP resistance, it is a certification that you get from a competent authority. Well, so this can survive the occasional splash of water, maybe in the kitchen. Don't take it to the swimming pool or toss it into the sea. That's not advisable with any device. That said, with the water and dust resistance rating that the Samsung Flip comes with, it is kind of reassuring that you're spending so much money on such an expensive device and the company has thought it through. In terms of what powers these phones under the hood, there is a slight difference. This comes with the older Snapdragon 8 Gen 1. Now, on even the Samsung Galaxy S23 Ultra, they have the 8 Gen 2. And this comes with the MediaTek Dimensity 9000 Plus SoC. Now, honestly, if you want to get basic tasks done on either phone, this MediaTek Dimensity or this Snapdragon 8 Gen 1, it doesn't really make a difference. Both of them can do it absolutely splendidly. This particular device obviously runs on ColorOS, but both devices now have support from Android 13. So all these flexible windows, split screen, all the functions using the cover display as maybe a viewfinder for your camera, all of these features are available on both devices. And so that's quite a smooth experience on either of these flip phones. Talking about the cameras, that's an interesting one. Just look at the sensors here and just look at this device. There's a huge difference in size. And obviously at the back, you see Oppo is now working on its cameras with Hasselblad. And that means that we will see better color science. But does that mean that the quality of your image changes altogether? Well, you have to log on to the Tech Today website to actually find out more. But what I can tell you is from my experience with their sister brand, OnePlus, and Hasselblad, the color science certainly changes, but we really have to test these sensors, these lenses, and see what it's all about. Samsung devices do have fantastic cameras, but over here, we have noticed it, sometimes oversaturating images. I think both devices are fine, but if you want to geek out on just the specs, the Oppo Find N2 Flip comes with a 50 megapixel main camera, and an 8 megapixel wide angle sensor. On the front, it comes with a 32 megapixel selfie shooter. And that's where you can hope that a little bit of magic happens. Let's take a quick selfie just to make sure. But when you're talking about the Samsung Galaxy Z Flip 4, it actually has two 12 megapixel sensors, one wide and one ultra wide. And on the front, of the phone. If you're relying on the selfie camera, then it comes with just a 10 megapixel selfie camera. But honestly, if you are using this device, the selfie camera does a fairly decent job. It's a matter of personal preference, but I think that the Samsung Z Flip 4 does a better job, even though the specifications tell a whole different story. Well, if you're shelling out the big bucks on these flip phones, then battery life might be a key factor for you. And there's a lot of things we need to talk about over here. Let's list them out. Firstly, in pure numbers, 3,700 mAh battery on the Samsung device, 4,300 mAh battery, which certainly does a lot better on the Oppo device. Also, with this external screen, which does so much more than the Samsung device, well, it does need a lot more juice. But then when you do discharge these devices and you're playing around with the cat on the screen a little bit too much, then you need to charge it fast as well. The Oppo comes with something that is proprietary to them, super hook fast charging. When you compare it to the Samsung, the Samsung just gets 25 watt charging on the Z Flip 4, whereas the Oppo gets 44 watt wired fast charging support. Now that can be a game changer. More importantly, the Oppo comes with an 80 watt charger in the box, along with a flimsy plastic cover as well, but at least they're giving you that with this device, well, you need to buy a charger, much like the Forbidden Fruit Company. All right, let's give you a final verdict because this is a very interesting ending. We're going to end it the way we began. This was the original undisputed winner because there was genuinely no dispute. It was the only device available in this form factor in India. 
come March 2023 and they have a very, very worthy contender in the Oppo Find N2 Flip. The Oppo Find N2 Flip costs 89999 Now, if you have an existing Oppo device that you want to exchange, then this gets a lot cheaper. And other devices as well, you can bring it down to 80 to 85,000 rupees. I think if you were to compare it, it's still more expensive, strangely, in India than most offers included on the Samsung Flip 4. And also, this is an older device and Samsung has all sorts of bundles that they offer with headphones and, and watches and whatnot. So you get a bunch of offers on this device. While reviewing this device for the past few weeks and having exclusive access to it, all I can say is this. With the external display, the camera, what they've done with the hinge, the fact that this can open and close four lakh times, they've tested this for durability as well. Maybe, and this, the jury's still out on, the Oppo Hasselblad partnership and a bunch of things that they are working on. And the utility and functionality of using this device, this definitely trumps the Samsung in more ways than one. And more importantly, Samsung comes with that sort of brand perception of a very premium device. So if you're considering buying a Samsung, I think there's only two types of users. Either you like Samsungs or you just never want to own a Samsung device. Over the years, I've become quite a fan of the way Samsung actually interprets Android. It's become bloatware free, very good displays. But now we're talking about foldables. And in this flip category, the Oppo is giving it some serious competition in 2023. If you like the video, do like, comment, share and subscribe.